In this video, we're going to discuss the modern view of atomic structure. So in the last few videos, we've been taking a trip through history, talking about some of the most important experiments that led to the discovery of the atomic structure that we have today. Uh, this list of experiments that I chose to highlight was in no means exhaustive. Uh, there were a lot of different scientists and experiments that went into the discovery of the current structure of the atom that we have. I just wanted to highlight a few of the most illuminating examples through history of finding uh, different highlights of atomic structure. Now, what I want to do now is just shift gears and go into what we know about the atom at this point um, and how it can help you identify different things in chemistry, different things about atomic structure. So um, so this figure on the right is kind of a, a summary of what we know about the atom at this point. This picture even is, is still fairly simplistic, but it gives us a great um, visual representation to start to discuss atomic structure in its modern context. So basically the atom is composed of a nucleus, right? We saw this in Rutherford's experiment, this densely populated pocket of positive charge but um, in this nucleus is not just positive charge there's also some neutrally charged subatomic particles there as well and then the negatively charged particles um, exist in a cloud uh, surrounding the nucleus of the atom so at this point our uh, understanding of atomic structure centers primarily around three subatomic particles so i'm going to make a little chart here so let's they will have the particle name in this first column, right? So the three subatomic particles that our understanding of atomic structure primarily centers around um, are the electron, the proton, and the neutron. So each of these subatomic particles composes the atom. Now the electrons are the negatively charged particles that exist in a cloud around the nucleus. The protons are the positively charged particles in the nucleus. And the neutrons are neutrally charged particles in the nucleus. So I want to make the charge the second column of this table here. Right, so uh, electron has a negative one charge, protons have a plus one charge, and a neutron has no charge by contrast. Uh, the th other thing I wanna illuminate here is the mass of each of these particles. Now, obviously, since these are subatomic particles, they're all relatively small, uh, but I do wanna highlight the difference in mass between them. So this is going to be uh, in units of kilograms. And so for a proton, uh, the mass of a proton and a neutron are about 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms, right? And same here for a neutron as well. Each neutron has about 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms as its mass. Now, an electron, by contrast, is actually orders of magnitude smaller um, and lighter than, uh, than a proton or a neutron. So its mass is about 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms, right? So we're talking orders of magnitude smaller uh, of the mass for the electron. One interesting thing to point out, though, even though the electron doesn't really contribute that much to the mass of the atom, it takes up majority of the space, right? So a lot of the volume of an atom is taken up by these electrons existing in this cloud of charge surrounding a nuclei. And a nucleus takes up very little space. Well, remember from the Rutherford experiment, we saw that this nucleus is really dense and tightly packed. So it doesn't take up much volume, but it gives uh, primarily the mass for the atom, but it doesn't take up that much space. So a lot of the volume is actually taking up taken up by electrons here, right? So these three subatomic particles are going to be crucial to your understanding of the atom and obviously your understanding of molecules and chemistry in general. Now, there are two different types of atoms um, that you should be familiar with uh, in your study before we even start studying uh, atoms on a deeper level. Uh, those two types of atoms are isotopes 
right? So isotopes are atoms that have the same number of protons, but differ in the number of neutrons. So what that means is that they have different weights, even though they're actually the same element. So these are atoms. with the same number of protons, but different weights. Right, so you use the protons as a guide to figure out uh, what your element actually is. So for example, hydrogen has one proton, right? Any atom that has one proton is hydrogen, right? But if it has a variable number of neutrons, um, that could be a different weight to that atom, but it's still the same identity, right? Um, the other type of atom that you need to be familiar with are called ions. Now, ions are an atom or a group of atoms that, you know, have the same identity, but they differ by a, either having a net positive or negative charge. So these are atoms with a net positive or negative charge. And so you really just determine this by looking at the balance of electrons and protons, right? So if you have one more electron than you have proton, you'll have a net negative charge. If you have one more proton than you have electron, you'll have a net positive charge, right? And based on the imbalance, you could have multiple, like a two plus, three plus, four plus charge for an ion, right? So this is just any atom or group of atoms. It could be a molecule as well that has a net positive or negative charge. These are isotopes and ions. So, um, so looking at this, we have all of these different types of atoms that we can have, right? We know we can identify them by a particular element based on the number of protons that they have. Uh, but we also need to have a way to be able to label these with a level of a, a high level of specificity. And this is where something called atomic symbols comes in. So atomic symbols. So atomic symbols are just a shorthand way to, uh, to specify any atom, be it an isotope or an ion, uh, with a high degree of specificity. So the general format for an atomic symbol, um, I'll put the symbol X here. This X is whatever that chemical symbol is for whatever element you're interested in. So I'll go ahead and show the periodic table, right? I'm sure you guys have seen this all throughout your lives in science classroom walls the world over. But, um, but basically the atomic, the chemical symbol is this symbol from the periodic table. So if for oxygen, it will be O, for F, it will be fluorine, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that's what I mean by chemical symbol in this context, X would be the chemical symbol. And then on the left-hand side, you'll have a subscript and a superscript. So I'll call the subscript A and the superscript B. Now, what are each of these uh, subscript and superscript respectively? So B is going to be your atomic mass, right? This is your atomic mass. This is how much your at that particular atom weighs, right? And we'll get more into the units as the class goes on, but just for now, refer, we'll refer to it as atomic mass units. So there's a special unit uh, of mass that's used by the periodic table. Right now, we'll just refer to it as atomic mass units. And the A is the atomic number. Now, the atomic number is actually the number of protons uh, that would exist on the in the atom. Right. So if we let's uh, go back to the periodic table for a second. Right. On this periodic table, the atomic number is appearing right right above the chemical symbol. So for boron, it has an atomic number of five. That means a boron atom would have five protons. Same thing with aluminum. It would have 13 protons. Right. Based on that atomic number. 
right? So, uh, so this means using this chemical symbol notation, every single isotope or ion of any given element will have its own unique identifier, right? So let's look at an example of chlorine, right? So chlorine has the chemical symbol CL, right? Let's look back at the periodic table and see how many protons that guy should have, right? So if we look at chlorine, chlorine's here on the periodic table. Um, its atomic number is 17. That means that the atomic, um, that means that on an atomic level, the protons, we should have 17 protons for a chlorine atom. So if we're building the atomic symbol, we will put 17 here in the subscript. And for chlorine, there are actually two uh, naturally occurring isotopes of chlorine uh, in nature. Well, there, there are multiple, but two primary ones is chlorine 35. And so we can have one with an atomic mass of 35. And we can also have chlorine with an atomic mass of 37. These are two uh, naturally occurring isotopes of chlorine, chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. And this is how we would denote the chemical symbols. And if we had a charge, so let's say these chlorines were negatively charged, we'll just put the charge up top. If it's negative one, we usually just put a negative sign uh, in the superscript there for the charge. If it was a negative two charge, we'll just say negative two, so on and so forth, right? So that's the general idea behind chemical symbols. So you should be able to write a chemical symbol given the number of protons, neutrons, or what have you, right? Now, a little bit of a note about this atomic mass. This atomic mass is actually the sum of the protons and neutrons, right? So I'll write that down here. So the atomic mass is the sum of the protons and neutrons, right? So basically here we will have, you know, the 17 protons contributing their weight to the atomic mass. And then that we know that the others, um, the other contributions to the atomic mass are neutrons, right? And so the only thing that's different between these two isotopes of chlorine is that one has two, the chlorine 37 has two more neutrons than chlorine 35. Okay, so let's get some practice in writing these atomic symbols here. So this example problem, it says write out symbols for each of the following ions. So the first one, let's look at the first one. It says uh, uh, this atom has 63 protons 60 electrons and 88 neutrons, right? So for A, right, we know we have 63 protons. So let's go to the periodic table and see what our element should be, right? We go down to periodic table, 63 is right here, right? So that means we should be using europium. This is going to be a europium atom. So we can go ahead and write our chemical symbol EU. Right. We know that it has 63 protons, so we know the atomic number, what should be in the subscript, is 63. Right. So now the only things we really have to figure out is what's the atomic mass, and if there's a charge, what is the charge? Right. So to get the atomic mass, we just add the protons and the neutrons. Right. So just add these two numbers together. That gives you the atomic mass in atomic mass units. So 63 plus 88 gives us 151, right? So we have an atomic mass of 151. Now you wanna ask yourself, what's the charge for this europium atom? Well, we have 63 protons and 60 electrons. That means we have three more protons than we have electrons. So this would be a three plus charge, right? That means we will have a positive charge of plus three, three more protons than electrons. Okay, uh, let's go to B. So B says we have 50 protons, 68 neutrons, and 48 electrons. Going back to our periodic table, if we have 50 protons, then that puts us here, right? 50 protons means we have a tin atom. So tin's chemical symbol is Sn. And we know this atomic number should be 50 since it has 50 protons. So uh, all we have to do in order to uh, get the atomic mass is add the protons and neutrons. 50 plus 68 is going to give us 118 
for our atomic mass. And now we just have to figure out the charge. 50 protons, 48 electrons. That's two more protons than electrons. So we have a two plus charge. Okay, going down here. C, we got 16 protons, 18 neutrons, 18 electrons. Going to the periodic table, 16 puts us at sulfur. So this guy will be a sulfur atom. So we can write our chemical symbol, sulfur, and we know it has 16 protons, so the atomic number for sulfur, 16. Uh, 16 plus 18, right, is our number of neutrons is 18, so that'll give us 34. And in this case, we have 16 protons, 18 electrons, right? So we have that, an imbalance of two, but the imbalance shifts towards the electron. So that means this is going to be a negative two charge, right? So I'll put two minus in the superscript there. Okay, and the last one. We have 16 protons again, so we don't even have to go to the periodic table. We know that that's going to be sulfur again, right? If we got 16 protons, it must be sulfur. This subscript here must be 16. And for, uh, for the atomic mass, we have 16 protons, 16 neutrons. So that's going to give us an atomic mass of 32. And again here, we have 16 protons and 18 electrons. So that means we have a negative two charge, two negative, right? So these are actually two isotopes of sulfur. Okay, so hopefully this gives you a good understanding of our modern view of the of atomic structure and a little bit of practice on writing these atomic symbols and interpreting information from the periodic table.